morning. Well, it's Easter Sunday and uh, the kids are with their mom uh, today. So I'm gonna celebrate uh, the way I often do on holidays by working on a few things on the truck. I actually still have a whole huge list of projects I need to finish in the sort of camper build in the canopy. But I have a couple little sort of front end projects that I have been um, fiddling around with I wanna get finished up today. Just little things that have been bugging me. Because my Asphere 4x4 skid plates uh, are designed to mount up with the stock bumper on the Nissan Frontier, um, I had to customize it slightly to eliminate some of the mounting points so it would sort of uh, have a clean finish here. That did leave uh, a little sort of gap between my winch mount and the skid plate. And so um, I made a very, very simple little uh, basically a cover to bridge that gap. Now I made this out of steel sheet metal and it's not heavy duty by any means at all and it's not necessarily intended to be, you know, protective like a skid plate. More than anything else, it's to keep, you know, branches or whatever from wedging up in here and also maybe to increase aerodynamics just a little bit going down the highway, just eliminating that sort of flat dead spot in there. And then also just cosmetically, it just cleaned up. It was sort of, it just didn't look very tidy. So um, I bought a pretty big piece of scrap sheet metal at the steel yard for like $8 and used it just a tiny portion of it to make this. Uh, I wanted to have some extra in case this went wrong on the first attempt. It secures at the bottom with the same bolts that hold the skid plate on. And then I've added some bolts here through some existing holes on the that were already there on the winch mount. The trickiest part was probably the bending, getting the bends, and I just uh, you know clamped a piece of wood to it and hammered on it with a rubber mallet until I got it pretty much to the shape that I wanted. You may recall that when we first got the Jackery 500, Lucy and I looked at how it could be useful at home during a blackout. The other night, we actually got the opportunity to use the Jackery 1500 at home when our entire neighborhood lost electricity spanning the evening and well into the night. We charged up my portable lights, which I hadn't recharged after my last camping trip, and Lucy was able to warm up with the electric heater running off the Jackery 1500's AC output. While I mostly use my Jackery units during overland excursions, we were happy to have them around when the power went out. So this hood support is supposed to fit into a spot right here, a little oblong hole, and uh, there's like a, the end of this metal rod had like a plastic fitting that would fit up in there. Well, of course that plastic broke off. So it's not very stable. It doesn't hold there. And I found a few other spots where I could try to hold it, but it, uh, it's not very stable. I've had this thing fall down uh, when I was trying to air up and stuff like that a number of times. I can put it through this hole here, but then the weight of the hood is resting on this rod. It's actually on the top surface of the hood. And so eventually I'm sure what that's gonna do is that's gonna make a little dent, an upward dent in the top of that. So I am gonna try and fashion a little receiver uh, that will hold that instead. So I poked around a bit and uh, I found this piece of half inch electrical conduit. Even though the kids aren't here and I'm spending the holiday in the garage, I do still enjoy a good Easter egg. This was actually part of my old awning on the Forester. It was one of the pieces that slid out to support the tarp. And what I found is that it just fits inside of this hole right here. And so I think I'm gonna figure out a way to kind of close that up and make it just long enough so that it fits in there and uh, just sort of weld it on there, I think. Oh, 
it's not beautiful, but uh, I think it'll do the trick. Well, it's not beautiful, but uh, it's functional. It's definitely solid. Uh, I think that's going to hold just fine. I know that's going to hold just fine. I'm just going to get a little bit of paint on there to cover all that bare metal and good to go. Another fairly major upgrade is the new tires on the truck. I was hoping to wait a couple more months and get these at the same time as the awesome new alloy wheels All Dogs Off Road has developed for the Frontier, but my existing tires had worn down beyond the point of being serviceable. After four years of running the BF Goodrich KO2 on two different vehicles, I decided to give the Falcon Wild Peak AT3W a try. I've heard nothing but great things about these tires, and I'm very curious to see how they compare to the KO2s, which I was always very happy with. With the truck now sitting on a 2 inch lift from All Dogs Off Road, this gave me the ability to bump up from a 31 to a 33 inch tire to get the rear diff a little higher off the ground. After I've got more miles logged both on and off road, I will provide a more thorough review. I've also been working on installing the Max Air Dome exhaust fan on the canopy extension. I'll be covering this in more detail whenever I get the canopy build video put together. I also used spray can bed liner on the built-in cabinetry for a protective coating and just to give it a more finished look. It's a question that everyone has been asking me for a long, long time. What winch are you going to put on there? I really did not know which direction I wanted to go with it. Lots of people were very interested in seeing me run a budget option, like something from Harbor Freight. Many, many people also, you know, were very adamant that for a winch, something that may be potentially saving your butt out there in the wilderness, it's not the place to save money. I read, I don't know how many forums, I read, I don't know how many reviews, but finally I pulled the trigger and what I'm getting is a Harbor Freight and what I'm getting is a Rough Country and what I'm getting is a Smitty Built. No, what I'm getting is the Warren Evo 10, something like that, Evo 10,000 or VR 10,000 Warren, I'll put it on the screen. So this is the sort of lower end Warren. So I got the Warren. I am going with their more budget line. They're made in China. Some of the other brands, you know, they're not that much less expensive. And so I figured, you know, might as well just get the Warren. It's an Oregon company. Uh, the warranty is supposed to be very, very good. It's not here yet, but it will be on the truck just as soon as I can possibly get it on there. So I've purchased the Warren VR Evo 10 not the 10s so it does come with steel line instead of synthetic but i'll be partnering with master pull to convert the winch to one of their synthetic line options and i will have more on that in an upcoming video i've got some interesting trips planned i'm really excited to get out uh, across the west again over the coming months and i think i'm going to have some really interesting videos to share with you guys over the coming months thanks for watching